welcome to Smashing Patriarchy, where we deconstruct this social construct, critically analyze it to, inter to expose its internal functions, assumptions, contradictions, in order to subvert its apparent rationality. All right, let's get smashing. I'm your hostess, Mitchie Main, your main girl. <laughs> Today's episode is about domestic violence. Uh, sociologist Sylvia Walby has pointed out that one of the characteristics of a patriarchal culture is violence against women. And this is common to patriarchal cultures almost exclusively because domestic violence rarely happens in matriarchal cultures. So throughout time and throughout the globe uh, in patriarchal societies, uh, violence is very common among uh, those cultures. Wow. So, patriarchy is a social system. Uh, it's a system in which men hold primary power and they dominate in roles of political authority, uh, moral authority, and social privilege, uh, as well as economic control. <laughs> Patriarchy is also marked by the dominance of the father in the family or the clan. Mm. Mm -mm, definitely not. So, in a system, a, a patriarchal system where men predominate in roles of political authority, economic authority, moral authority, uh, privilege, um, where men hold primary power over uh, women, it is very easy to get into a system of domestic violence. Um, so we must include domestic violence in any discussion of patriarchal cultures. <laughs> Although domestic violence can occur to any gender, 85% of domestic violence occurs against women. Um, abuse, domestic abuse does not occur equally among genders. This is largely um, violence against women. So domestic violence is really actually prevalent in the United States. What's domestic violence, you ask? <laughs> According to Wikipedia, domestic violence is the willful intimidation, physical assault, battery, sexual assault, and or other abusive behavior as part of a systematic pattern of power and control perpetrated by one intimate partner against another. It's also known as intimate partner violence. It includes physical violence, uh, sexual violence, psychological violence, and emotional abuse. The frequency and severity of domestic violence can dramatically, however, can vary dramatically. However, the one constant component of domestic violence is one partner's consistent efforts to maintain power and control over another. <laughs> okay, so, taking a chapter from uh, Safe Horizons, uh, domestic violence is perpetrated by a current or former intimate partner. It's also known as intimate partner violence. Uh, it can occur in heterosexual and same-sex relationships. Intimate partners can include current or former spouses, current or former boyfriends and girlfriends, uh, dating partners, or just sex partners. Okay, here's the deal. It affects like 12 million Americans every year. Uh, one third of a women are affected by domestic violence or a sexual assault in their lifetime. <laughs> And 12 million Americans are being affected by this every year. And the consequences of that are uh, far-reaching, health-wise, economic-wise, and otherwise. Okay, so according to domesticviolencestatistics.org, it is the third leading cause of death for women. <laughs> According to the CDC, domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women, more than car accidents, muggings, and rapes combined. 
the number one cause of injury to women is domestic violence. Half the population, the number one thing they have to worry about in getting hurt is by their intimate partner. Uh, our homes are the least safe places for us. How do you like them apples? Domestic violence is an issue here. 92% of all women say that domestic violence is their top concern uh, for health and safety. So that's nearly half of our population. That's our number one concern. <laughs> is dom domestic violence always physical abuse? Why, no. Uh, again, according to the National Council Against Domestic Violence, it is important to note that domestic violence does not always manifest as physical abuse. Emotional and psychological abuse can often be just as extreme as physical violence. Lack of physical violence does not mean the abuser is any less dangerous to the victim, uh, nor does it mean the victim is any less trapped by the abuse. <laughs> Women in domestic violence support groups, um, the number one thing they talk about is the psychological abuse. Psychological abuse is physical abuse. Um, you know, the worry, the, you know, look at my gray hairs. Uh, the wrinkles, the stress, the trauma, um, the high blood pressure, um, you know, whatever other physical ailments could come from a high stress life. Um, so yeah, do not dismiss psychological abuse. Psychological abuse can include actual physical violence to you or even just threats of physical violence. Um, part of the most damaging aspect of physical violence is the feeling of betrayal by the person who beat you up. So psychological violence can include uh, real physical violence and threats of physical violence to you or your loved ones. This must end. Okay, emotional abuse can also include, um, it includes things like psychological put-downs, name-calling um, and other put-downs. You know, you're a loser, you can't do this, you're a terrible mother. It also includes stalking. Uh, which is excessive calls, texts, emails, monitoring your daily activity, um, like reading your emails, reading your text messages, texting you every five minutes while you're out, when are you going to come back, where are you, who you're with, um, oh, you left wearing lipstick, oh, you whore, uh, that's psychological abuse. Uh, monitoring their, your daily activities, um, it's very coercive and controlling and that's psychologically abusive, you know, just those are cuffs. Uh, using technology to track a person's location has made it easy for abusers to control their partners. Uh, financial abuse is extremely common. In fact, 94 to 99 percent of survivors of domestic violence actually report uh, financial abuse. Okay, this includes withholding money, uh, ruining your credit, stopping a partner from getting or keeping a job, or paying their mortgage, or um, uh, let's see, cutting off your utilities, uh, not putting you on the bills, not put, you know, putting your name on the mortgage. Um, you know, there's all types of ways uh, to keep you in control financially. <laughs> Okay, another form of emotional abuse would be threatening to out you to your family or your professional peers or, um, you know, your church or your community. Um, you know, if you're still in the closet and the person forces you to stay in that relationship with them or else, you know, he'll out you, uh, can be very intimidating. Okay, uh, other forms of domestic violence include Isolating the victim away from friends and family, using fear and intimidation to control the victim, destroying or getting rid of the victim's property, and sexual abuse, which includes making you get pregnant, making you have sex with him and others, or otherwise using sex as a weapon. 
Again, according to the National Council Against Domestic Violence, it is not always easy to determine in the early stages of a relationship if one person will become abusive. Domestic violence intensifies over time. Abusers may often seem wonderful and perfect initially. Okay, this is the honey trap. Uh, they seem perfect to begin with, but they gradually become, and maybe not so gradually, maybe it happens the night that you move in together. Uh, they become more aggressive and controlling as the relationship continues, and that's almost always for sure. Domestic violence almost always escalates, so if he um, or she's starting to act uh, stocky and abusive and controlling already right now, uh, take a look about, uh, take a thought about getting out of <laughs> So, what may start out looking harmless can often lead to something really scary. Uh, for example, okay, at first they might want to spend all their time with you because they love you so much, um, and it escalates into extreme control and abuse. Um, you know, an attitude like that, oh, I love you so much, I have to be with you, you know, that's the kind that turns into, oh, I'll kill you if you don't stay with me, and I'll kill you if you go with someone else, and I'll kill him too. Okay, um, Sometimes they even threaten to kill you if you speak to your family or friends or, or certain other people. You know, go to a women's shelter. <laughs> it's expected that women could just leave the relationship, leave the domestic abusive uh, relationship. And that's definitely not necessarily true. Um, you know, people think, oh, she's strong, she's a tough girl, she would leave if she wanted to. Um, but you don't know the kind of threats that he's made. Um, he may have threatened to kill her family members, take their kids away, destroy her in other ways. And um, you know how three women every day are murdered here. They're usually murdered when they're leaving. So breaking up is the most uh, dangerous thing to do with a partner who's abusive. Um, so don't assume that she could leave if she wanted to. They may be threatening to, they may have threatened to murder you if um, they left. So, you don't know, maybe she's even protecting you. Smash the patriarchy and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. Donate to the main girl at paypal.me.